All right, let's talk about the 401k contribution limits for the year 2024, as well as the traditional and Roth IRA contribution limits for the year 2024. Now, the 401k contribution limits for 2024, and this also includes 403Bs, 457 retirement plans, such as TSPs, your new contribution limit is $23,000. If you're over the age of 50, you can put a catch-up contribution into your 401k, 403b, 457 TSP plan of $7,500. So 23,000 plus 7,500 is 30,500, the maximum contribution to a 401k plan 403B, 457, or TSP plan if you're over the age of 50. If you are under the age of 50, the maximum amount that you can put into your 401k is $23,000. Now, that is an increase of $500 from the year 2023. So we've had an increase in the 401k contribution, but not in the catch-up contribution. So it's a $500 increase year over year. Make sure, make sure if you are contributing to your 401k and you're doing the max contribution, you talk to your HR or your plan administrator to update your contribution for the $500 increase. Now, Let's go to IRA contribution limits for 2024. This will include both Roth IRAs and traditional IRAs. Last year, the maximum contribution was $6,500 if you're under the age of 50. The 2024 limit is now $7,000. Again, a $500 increase from the previous year. The catch-up contribution for those of 50 or older is $1,000. It's the same as it was in 2023. There's been no increase in the catch-up contribution for 401ks or traditional and Roth IRAs. So if you are automatically depositing money into your IRA, your Roth IRA, and you need to put more in, you have to go in and adjust that figure for the new contribution limits. Just make sure you do that through your custodian, whether that's Fidelity, Schwab, Vanguard, or wherever. Okay, now there's been some updates as well to 401ks. So let's talk about those for a second. Now, there's actually more penalty-free withdrawals if you're under the age of 59 and a half for 401ks, 403Bs. The first new exception allows people who have experienced a personal or family financial emergency to withdraw up to $1,000 per year and avoid paying the 10% penalty. And those who take advantage of this opportunity can take up to three years to repay the amount borrowed from the 401k. So you can take $1,000, not pay the 10% penalty, if you've experienced a personal or family financial emergency, you will pay taxes on that money if you keep it and you choose not to repay that borrowed loan. The second new exception will allow domestic abuse survivors to make small withdrawals from their 401k plans without having to pay the 10% penalty on early distributions. 401k participants can self-certify that they experienced domestic abuse to make the penalty-free withdrawal. The amount is the lesser of $10,000 or 50% of the account, okay? Now, some other big changes to 401ks. This is, a, this is a huge change to your 401k. You can now use your 401k contribution to pay off student loans and still get matching money from your contributor or from your employer, I mean. So what this means is you can make a contribution to your student loan, your employer would still put the match into your 401k. Let me let me show you how this works. And this also applies to 403Bs, 457s, and simple IRAs, okay? Now, in order for this to work, your student loan has to be a qualified student loan payment, which means you're paying off tuition, fees, books, and expenses. OK, and that means you can receive matching retirement contributions from your employer. This is huge. And this is the biggest change that we've seen to the 401k in many, many years. Also, 
If you have a Roth 401k and you reach required minimum distribution age, you are no longer required to take a required minimum distribution from a Roth 401k. You're still required to take an RMD from a 401k, 457 TSP, but not a Roth 401k. All right. I hope this video has been helpful. God bless. Bye-bye.